Hello, and we are live for our third session of uh, Painting the Descent Miniatures. Uh, we've had a wonderful conversation offline, and we really should have turned the camera on a little bit earlier than now so you could hear it. But tough, you'll never know what we said. Oh. We are here painting um, two lovely miniatures with two lovely peoples. Um, let's have a look at the miniatures first, and then we'll uh, introduce the peoples. First up is uh, Ke is it Ke I want to say Kelly, but also Keely. I think it's just Kelly. I, I yeah, know. very strange. Uh, well, not strange, but like un uh, not the normal spelling. Um, Fantasy esque spelling. Yes. Uh, she's very cool. We're going to be doing some skin and some hair on her today. And this is Chance. Uh, we're going to be looking at doing uh, fur and uh, getting nice textures mm. on. And with me today we have uh, David. David, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you are here. Why are you here? So I am uh, David Geimer and I wrote the Descent novel Shield to Ken. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to see him the whole time this time after having to disappear last time. Have you caught up with last week's painting at all? Uh, still here. But <laughs> <not> finished. <laughs> <laughs> and Robbie. Hi, uh, yep. I uh, also a sci-fi fantasy author. Um, I've done one descent novel, The Demon of Falahath, and I've got another one, The Gates of the Selgrim, coming out in November, I think. Yes. And then a third one called Zachareth coming out next year, which I'm halfway through. <laughs> Very exciting. Yes, so Gates of Felgrim is out in October in the US and November in the UK. That's what go. that one is. And the Shield of Dakan is out now everywhere, ebook and paperback. Go buy it. And the Doom of Falahar. That was our first one, came out last year. So also available everywhere. And if you go to the Dice Cup in Nottingham or give them a call, uh, they have signed copies of them. So and they are happy to post them. So uh, yeah. do uh go and ask them for those signed copies so that I don't look like an idiot saying, yes, people will definitely want these signed copied ones. Um, go and buy them, um, please. The also, go play games know. at the Dice Cup. It was, it's really good, a really nice place. Um, yes, so we are painting Descent, and I actually have uh, the game now. Oh, this piece. This. Wow, there it is. <laughs> it's my whole body. heavy box, isn't it? Yeah. It's an absolute beast. And I played the first little scenario with my brother last weekend. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. What I really like is the terrain. You can build all the terrain and then it slips in this little bit of the box here. So we've got like all the like staircases and the bookshelves with potions on. Hello. Sorry, I'm terribly distracted here by... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Charles. All the miniatures. <laughs> Charles is going. He's going to knock those planes down. <laughs> you can see. Don't go that way. <laughs> see, this is why my parents just don't let the cat in the house. <laughs> that was okay. He's coming underneath. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. Look, trees. Awesome. Yeah, oh, I actually saw one at the UK Games Expo, and I did like the terrain, the um, you know, the stairs, and and for some reason the water features. I like the little lakes and yeah, and there's like yeah, you get the, like the little whales and yeah, it's really good fun. And the app is very good because it tells you like what to build at when, and you move through, and no one has to be like checking all the rules all the time. You can just get on with the game because the app does all the rules with it for you, uh, which is very nice. Clever. Yeah, I really like it. Um, yeah, and now I've almost got painted uh, heroes that I can put into it. <laughs> yeah. Yay. If I ever finish the bits that I've not done on camera, yeah, which is quite a bit. But yes, today we are looking at these guys. So I'm going to start off with the skin on Kelly. Um, and Robert, you can probably tell us a little bit more about Kelly. I don't think her story's come out yet. Uh, but I did notice that um, Sirius and um, Eric have come out. 
Awesome. I didn't actually know that, but that's cool. Um, yeah, she is a dwarf adventurer. Uh, she kind of grew up um, on the stories that her dad told her about all the crazy adventures that went down back in the day, and uh, that made her want to get in on that action. So uh, she's kind of following in her dad's footsteps and wants to just be have the most fun and the craziest, wildest times going to all far corners of Terranoth and going on mad adventures. Yay. I like her. You can't play her at the beginning. You have to find no. her. No, so you can only play uh, the four that we've already painted up. Um, so Chance and Kelly are ones that you find along your adventure, and then you can decide if you want to take them along and play them instead. That's cool. Hmm. But because I was like, yeah, I'm going to play Kelly straight away, and it's like, no, you can't. <laughs> oh. So I'm the I'm the skinny elf dude that I've forgotten the name of already. Oh yes, that's who I was playing. Which current are we? Uh... Oh, so sorry. Yes, so I'm going. Yes, so this is uh, like if dark. you've got a trio of uh, dark skin, this is the middle color. Right. So you have your light and your you have your highlights and your shadow. This would be like your base color for your skin. All righty. And you're just going to paint like all the skin areas with this color. Hello, I fed you and everything. <laughs> you need to be quiet. Paint. Doesn't work. <laughs> oh. Sadie has been like that. I sat down to have lunch, gave her some lunch, and she immediately came and sat next to me, like, um, hello, are you going to feed me? And it's like, you've already had food. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think I did. Um, I'm very hungry, and your food is very tasty. <laughs> no. So, how have you been? What have you been up to? Tell us Whoa. the gods. <laughs> the gods. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, David's probably been writing. I have also been writing. So, that's yes, uh, <laughs> a bit boring, really, isn't it? It's always the same answer. Um, um, writing. I've been doing um, some short stories at the library. Uh, I. Uh, actually do have a fun weekend lined up uh, i'm going to my first this is major nerds alert uh reenactment weekend oh. so um i have been polishing up my 18th century musket <laughs> i like a weird euphemism but <laughs> i didn't want to say while we're recording <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. Where's that? Is that near it's, you? Uh, it's near Leeds. So okay. Near me. Uh, a country park called Oakwell Hall. Oh. Which should be nice. Yeah. Very but nice. that happen. So, yeah. I've not been doing much, just working and. Yeah. That sounds fun, though. Oh. I'm going to do her fingertips in skin as well. I think she's probably wearing gloves. Yeah, I'm just uh, wearing gloves after I've painted most of them. <laughs> yeah, I I'm going to do her fingertips anyway. She can have like some weird, like half gauntlet type thing going it on. It look like she's maybe just got, yeah, the backs of the hands and the fingers. Yeah. But I have just done the whole hand. So, <laughs> so I'll just pretend she's not wearing gloves. Yeah, she's got some serious jewellery going on, her knuckles there. Just... Uh, yeah, someone's computer is updating. What have you been up to and doing apart from the birthday bash? Apart from the birthday stuff, well, yeah, so last Sunday, Aconite had their birthday party um, in a local board game cafe, and that was really good fun. Um, the Dice Cup, as I've already mentioned, um, 
we played lots of like silly party games um, and ate cake, um, which is really fun, really nice. Um, and then, yeah, we're getting ready for Gen Con, which is uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, so we will be doing a live panel tomorrow on Gen Con TV. Uh, please come and watch if you can at 6 p.m. British summertime. Uh, we will be talking with some of our Arkham Horror authors and the story team at FFG and also uh, the creator of the third edition of Arkham Horror um, about Arkham law um, of Lovecraftian horror and um, where we see uh, the stories going in the future, like what they are looking for from Aconite and what our authors are looking forward to creating um, within the, the world and the law. So, yeah, it's, we're going to be now, keeping it going. Korean translation, I'm very jealous. Yes. I want a Korean translation. Yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, they started following us on Instagram um, as were they Korea and liking like all of our posts and stuff. And then, yeah, they just reached out and were like, hey, can, can, can we do a, can we, can we do a Korean Arkham Horror? Is, is that a cool thing we can do? We were like, yes, yes, that is a cool thing you can do. Please do that. So yeah, that's a very exciting. And I just think the covers, like when they, I mean, the covers are gonna look the same, but they're obviously they're gonna redo the fonts and sort of in like a sort of our horror-y type fonts, but with, um, yeah, their Korean, it's not kanji because that's Japanese, but that uh, form, of, yeah, it's going to look really pretty and cool. And they're going to be these like, sort of smaller, smaller books, so they're almost square. Um, they're going to look very cool. I'm very excited we'll get copies and I'll be like, I can't read these, but this is very exciting. <laughs> okay, so once you've got a couple of layers of the skin down, so just make sure that it's all sort of even. Um, touch up her face a little bit because it's pretty, pretty. Yeah, and then this, this weekend I'm away for my birthday, part two. Nice. Like the Queen, I have multiple birthdays for the <laughs> same week. So I'm going away with my puppy to, uh, not too far away, still in Nottingham, but we, I've hired out a little Airbnb place, nice. which will be fun, do some walks and have good fun times. Right. So next we're going to move on to the shadow parts. Um, and what you want to do is try uh, when you you want to try and mix the base with a bit of shadow so it's not too dark to begin with. So the darker one. Yeah, so it's sort of an even mix of the two. So one to one ratio. All right. Watered down or anything or just? Uh, yeah, so just a little bit of, of water in it so it's quite not super thin but yeah so it's easier to blend and you want to start just by um filling in all the recesses with that color And then once you've got like all the recesses sort of done, you can then just put the straight shadow on there. You want to be thinking about um, like what's hidden. So like under her hair, this part of her face is going to be in shadow. So what I would do is like do a rough sort of line of this is the dark, this is where this is going to go. And then the bit that you've just mixed up, 
use that to then blend um, the dark into the, the base. So like the whole left hand side of her face, I would do dark and then like under her chin. And then inside bits of her hands. Anything that will be sort of like covered by the shield and stuff as well. I always put a bit of shadow like over the eyes where the eye sockets would be. It'll just make it a bit easier when you're daring to do eyes, which you'll notice I haven't done a <laughs> stream for because yeah. you know, see how terrible I am at eyes. Thank everyone for terrible eyes. Yeah. I did my first ones the, uh, recently after watching some videos and they worked out all right. They did require some effort and I'd never do a whole army or anything. But Yeah, I always do them and I think, oh, that looks good. And then you take a photo of it and you're like, oh, no, wait, they're, they're completely looking in the wrong direction. <laughs> Get back over. Yeah. I'm not sure if the uh, my webcam is going to be good enough to see the eyes on them. No. <laughs> not even nearly but i did the eyes on lord of the rings miniatures and oh i was quite proud of it they, they're not perfect but yeah i mean like i'm never going to be able to be one of those people who does eyes with actual like colored irises and things it's like <laughs> no that's just too much work for me thank you <laughs> i don't want to start crying because uh it's, it's all wrong with the skin because normally i just you know put on a layer and slap it with some wash i've never i've never sort of carefully picked out the shaded areas with it yes it works it looks quite good yeah so like i i i like putting a shade on or sometimes yeah the contrast and that works well as well but if you if you can do like wet blending and blending on the skin then yeah it takes it to another level uh, even if you do like a skin tone, a wash, and then you go back in with the highlighting and um, wet blending over the top of that, it will increase your gain. So I, my dark brown wasn't uh, dark enough for what I was wanting, so I've just added a tiny little dot of black to it um, and I'm just gonna go in and really pick out some of the, the deeper recesses especially like inside the hands and on the neck I like her expression. One thing I really like about these minis is actually it's all like their expressions. They're quite characterful. Hmm. Yeah, the sculpting's really nice. Also, they're quite large, I think. Yeah, yeah that's true, yeah. Yeah, sort of maybe yeah, 30, 32 scale, probably. Maybe a little bit bigger. Probably a bit bigger. Try to compare it to a 32 scale. Yeah, probably about 32, rather than sort of heroic 28. Right. Dwarf compared to dwarf, we've got two here. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly who I was comparing it. I was comparing it to my dwarf. <laughs> yeah, I've got about the same size head. <laughs> What uh, Lord of the Rings minis have you been painting, David? Uh, Moria Dwarves. 
Nej. Han har fået langt fordi... Jeg har lyst til at spille den game back in the day. Jeg har aldrig spillet det. Jeg tror ikke, jeg har spillet det. Åh, det er rigtig godt. Det er så meget fun. Det er sådan, at det er bare sådan lidt forskelligt fra Warhammer. Men ja, det var meget fun. It's like I played like little skirmishes, just like little stories, uh -huh. which have always been quite fun. I bought the the Barrel Out of Bounds set and the Hobbit Hole. Oh, nice! Yeah, I've yeah. got a friend that's got the Hobbit Hole. Yeah, and then yeah, I bought Bilbo to sit in the Hobbit Hole. Old Bilbo as well. Yeah, I thought I'd probably just buy, you know. The Fellowship and the White Company, and just paint those. Have, have you played the FFG uh, Journeys in Middle Earth? Mm. No. I've not. No. It's good. So it's it's the same sort of style as the Descent. So it has an app with it, and it's oh. a bit of a map opening, sort of you against uh, the dark side, um, as it were. Um, Crossing your streams there. Yeah, I know. As I was saying, I was like, this is the wrong fandom. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late, it's already coming out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> but they, it also has really beautiful miniatures that are about, like uh, that are sort of like in this style as well. Um, uh, which I really like. And you can get little expansions with extra minis. Um, and then you get DLC that you can buy from the app to, to progress the story along. Um, yeah, and it's, it's fun. You start off on a small little bit of map. And then as you explore bits of map open up so you don't know what the map looked like before so before you start playing so you either got to try and be sort of type of team that either split up so yeah you have like a choice you could either split up as a team to open up more of the map because you only get x amount of turns before the game ends and you have to so complete certain objectives or you can stay together to keep your powers working well but you don't open up as much of the map and therefore you don't get enough extras so you have to sort of try and that find that balance between being close to each other so if you get into a terrible fight uh, you've got someone to back you up but also open up enough of the map that you find all the things that you're meant to find um so i really like books it's a it's a it's a fun but it does take up like a lot of your time you go like, oh, i'll just play this one more bit and this one more bit and it's like, oh, four days gone and i'm still not anywhere closer to saving middle earth so i started on the highlight bits now so what i'm trying to do is is sort of pick up where the highest bits like we did with the armor really but we're not looking for just like edge highlighting um this this is really just to give like some definition between um like especially on the face to show where so i would highlight just above the eyes on like the eyebrow the sort of brow ridge tips of nose tips of chin uh, like on the cheeks they would be my main areas of focus just to lighten up a bit before you put like the proper highlight on Hello, people watching as well. Hello. Do say hello. Do ask questions in the comments if you want to. Um, we'd love to talk to you. If you have any questions about the game, I can sort of maybe answer a couple of them now that I've played a little bit of it. Um, if you have any questions about the books, the stories, the characters, we are always happy to talk about them as well. Or if you just want to tell us how your week's going also be happy to hear about that what are you doing it's <laughs> <laughs> like i, I want to paint too scramble over all this when uh, when i'm working <laughs> only because you're here i think <laughs> yeah i like i think i do think that like sadie will just sit on the sofa all day while i'm working and as soon as I go into a meeting, she's like up and like running around and like trying to grab things. And it's like, what? why? Why are you doing that now? And I can't. 
tell you not to because I'm in the middle of a meeting. And that's why. I'm pretty sure my partner would say the same thing about me. <laughs> it's like, you always come in to get breakfast when I'm in a meeting. You never come in when I'm in a meeting, like, or when I'm not in a meeting to get food at the same time. <laughs> I mean, are you though fully dressed? I mean, because that's you don't want to be um, that one that is like walking in and just your boxes. <laughs> yeah, that would be a bit more questionable. Um, <laughs> the worst I've had is in a when I'm in a blanket. Like, I don't have that clothes on as well. I'm just draped in a comfy shawl, and uh, yeah. I think someone in the meeting was like, "Is that someone wearing like a, a shawl just walking past you?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the old lady that haunts this house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy when lockdown started, like watching like the people, the women who are like on the call in the morning and their husband's just like walking down in his pants, like la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a call, don't look everyone. <laughs> to put their hands over the camera. <laughs> See them go, what? I run away. <laughs> Unfortunately, my girlfriend is a doctor, so she had to do all her stuff in person still. Oh. None, of this, none of this fun. <laughs> yeah, well, I live alone, so if someone had come downstairs <laughs> in their boxes <laughs> while I was on a meeting, <laughs> I would be afraid. <laughs> uh, yeah. into my house, and why aren't you wearing any clothes? <laughs> Get their shotgun from under their painting desk. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to highlight like the very tips i've added a little bit of yellow to the lightest color yellow um, yeah just what kind of yellow like a super bright yellow i used this color yellow which is sort of an orangey yellow so definitely not a bright bright yellow um, and then just sort of mixed it into the brown so that so you see that's that's the highlighting color that i've used and then i've, I've made this sort of light brown color but i find if you put a white in with brown then you don't get the right depth so it mixing a yellow into the brown is much better for highlighting just blends a bit better in this bit of highlighting is literally tips of nose the very highest point of the cheeks, um, a little bit of the chin, and that's all. And then, yeah, it's the highest points of the fingers as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, I've, I've been able to use this grade one brush for everything i've not i've not changed it yay it's that fine over there yeah so i normally just use one brush for everything unless i you know i'm doing a specific task if i'm doing um shading then i'll use a two and then if i'm want to cover a big area then it's a one but normally everything is just a zero I rarely go smaller than that, even for like eyes. Um, I'm doing very fine freehand work, maybe. So I think this one here, her face, I did freehand with a with a tenno. Wow. But, yeah. That was very stressful for me because it was on <laughs> white and I was doing black. It's like if, if I mess this up, I'm not going to be able to cover this. <laughs> So hopefully you should be able to see some of the highlights giving like definition to the face. It's always quite subtle, like you don't with skin, you don't want to be like too heavy handed with your highlights. Yeah, I'm never totally happy with the faces I have to do on my models, I have to say. I'm uh... I'm really happy with my Karadrin, for instance, because they've all got, <laughs> got helmets. Yeah. 
yeah but i think like skin tone is definitely like i mean any of the techniques that we've been trying out um it's definitely uh a practice makes perfect type thing um, and i would recommend if you want to get like better at skins to paint um some busts up because they're a larger scale there's a lot more skin to play with um so they're good practice for working with different colors uh like working on like making skin look older or or darker or, or brighter they're really good I would highly recommend painting a bust or something. But that's pretty much. So I would I would call her sort of done, and then maybe at the end, after I painted up everything on her, probably go back and see what needed like extra highlighted touches or anything. But so far, pretty happy with that. Like I might go in and add a little bit, um, just a little bit of shade of like a like a null oil or something, um, just into the deepest recesses, just to get a really good shadow definition. But go for a subtle change in colour rather than something very obvious. And then we're going to do some hair. I've chose pinks. Um, don't know what colour you're going to go with for hair, but I've gone with pink. Oh, I don't know. I'm unprepared. What do we need? Uh, so again, just a, tr uh, a trio of colours. Everything I do is with a trio of colours. I haven't got pink, I don't think, so I'll go for some. You can go red. with any colour you like. I just thought she would look cool with pink hair. Also, now I think she would also look cool with blue hair. But I've got my pinks out, so we're going to do pink. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll do blue. If you think blue will look good, I'll do blue. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with pink as well. Yay! You guys need pinks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any pinks, otherwise I'd tell you if pink. I wouldn't have pinks if I wasn't doing a slanesh on it currently. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just pink. I'm doing pink robots, pink Necron. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I'm excited for them. Over, so I'm using a contrast over metallic, or uh, like a metallic copper, and then pink over that. It's real nice. So again, you do the middle, uh, middle shade yeah, first? Middle shade first. So the hair to begin with is still very much, it's very much like doing uh, the skin. Same steps. It's just sort of the highlighting that will be a bit different so that you can start to see some hair texture. Blue. I like painting hair. Yeah, something about the texture of it. Yeah, you can, and you can have a bit of fun with it as well. I've never done blue hair. Can I say that? She does look very stylish with her spiky, her long fringe. Yeah, it's sort of nice cropped pixie type thing going on. I like it.
All right. Nice. Lovely. I'm looking forward to seeing how your pink ones. <laughs> this, yeah, this pink, it looked a lot less baby pink in the bottle. <laughs> Here's uh, blue. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a nice colour. Yeah, it probably looks better than red would have looked. Better contrast against the skin. Yeah. I like to do a fancy hair colour whenever I'm doing a fancy model that as well. It's like, oh, in this world, I believe everyone can have pink hair if they want. <laughs> it just grows that way. They don't need to dye it. It's fine. I just think it's some green hair might have been nice. Yeah. Yeah, like a teal green would have been. Mm. Also go quite well. I never get the opportunity to use my moot green. It's too green. <laughs> talk at all about Zachara last week uh maybe Who's not <laughs> wow um <laughs> no spoilers yeah I don't, I don't think we did maybe we did i don't know but yeah it's about one of the bad guys from descent called Zachara, and uh <laughs> it's kind of his origin story his background story so um that's fun it's set before sort of the current timeline for the descent game um kind of just saying how he ended up the way he is so is it set sort of between the two timelines so between like second edition and the legends um, or just before legends or or into eel well um so he's currently I think the game is in his mid forties, and it starts when he's twelve, and finishes okay. when he's in his mid twenties. So I would put it twenty, finishing twenty years before the current one. I don't know when second edition was set up. So yeah, so yeah, maybe in the the between times. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny because it's my third descent novel, and I've yet to actually like. There's no reoccurring characters because it's all yeah. just stories and you keep killing them robbie stop coming back. <laughs> yeah. come back spoiler alert <laughs> everyone <laughs> dies <laughs> less intense body count in uh in the second one the third one i haven't finished yet so i don't know <laughs> i could uh, kill them all if i wanted well sadly i can't kill zagra but apart from that uh, um uh, we'll see <laughs> but uh you tell yeah. me did you tell me there was a lot less blood in your uh, your X Men book? There is. No one dies. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of like sort of um, off screen deaths, um, but the actual heroes don't kill anyone directly. They just beat them up, you know, in superhero style. Um, I say they don't kill anyone directly. I mean, one of them causes an earthquake, which then causes the building to collapse on the bad guy and crushes him to death. So, I, I guess there's plenty of killing, but it's really sort of not as <laughs> in your face as it normally would be <laughs> how is your body count for uh the dark avengers goodness hi <laughs> <laughs> you get to do a lot more uh um killy stuff uh, lots of people get killed in various ways and plus lots of people off off screen i suppose lots of cities getting blasted by evil people and lots of evil <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the most uh, sort of destructive thing that happens in my one is they uh, set fire to Brooklyn Bridge in New York. So that was cool. But again, no one sort of burns to death. I think everyone escapes. <laughs> yeah, and you got some lovely reviews for a Patriot list over the last week as well. This is some... 
yeah, not just come, come in. Up. Yeah, it's always nice to read. I like I like it when they come into my inbox and I'm like, oh, let's go read this one. And it's like, oh, this is lovely. And share that <laughs> with everyone. Yeah, I noticed there's quite a lot. Of, there are a few posts on like the December Facebook pages. Yes. Um, in the last few days, so that's nice. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah a couple of people like I just bought the fella a doom fella and I was like oh yay it's exciting. Mm -hmm. well, I see the descent pages. I need to expand my fandom. Yeah, Robbie's very good at going in and just spamming them all. <laughs> really yeah, cool. well, I try to say within reason. Like, I feel bad because most people are presumably on like there's sort of two main descent pages on Facebook and then there's just a recent new one for specifically the the new game. Um, so I kind of assume that most people are on both, so I feel bad posting to both because then they'll come have both come up in their timeline, but I'm clearly overthinking it. So yeah. just spam away. Yeah. I that's what I would do. I mean that's what I do do. <laughs> as soon as anything new comes out, it's like, hey, have you seen this? Every time I schedule these, it's like, and I'll just post them into all of the fan groups as well. There we go. Yeah, I can't remember. Sorry, are you still on the first colour here? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I've just moved on without telling anyone. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm moving on to the dark colour now. And I'm just uh, concentrating, to begin with, on just the recess areas. So um, just to define the different strands of hair, just with the shadow colour. And then I'll... I am excited to hit the finale of the Zachareth book because it's going to be a massive pitched battle. And I have not written a massive pitched battle for about two or three years now. So Ooh. Exciting. The last one I did was uh, my only Age of Sigma novel. So. Scourge your fate. That's the one. Yeah, great one. Yeah, I've decided after Patriot List that what everyone secretly just wants is action. They don't want clever plots or <laughs> Yeah. Uh, they just want they just want boat chases and explosions. And... Yeah. I uh <laughs> I've had a lot of there's been a lot less action in my more recent books for whatever reason. And uh but the last one, the last descent one, the action scenes that I did do well, it was like, oh, these are the best bits. I was like, I should just do more action, clearly. <laughs> it's the only way. I think it's because having written like these sorts of things for so long, after a while I get a bit bored of doing action and battles and I want to do like something else. Yeah. Um, but then everyone just wants the action really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Turn yeah, out. Sort of, I think people get used to. Oh, well, you write really good action, and so when you don't write, they're like, "Where, where is it?" Yeah, <laughs> I guess it turns out it is actually well, I'm kind of good at. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, more more actions and chases in future. That's <laughs> well. I take it you can't talk about any of the cool stuff you're doing, David. We're still on the brand. Uh, well, I'm not doing too much uh, long form at the moment. Like I said, I was doing a couple of uh, short stories for Black Library, uh, sort of planning another novel with Aconite, but mm -hmm. not writing it yet. Oh, and yeah, planning a, a novel for uh, Black Library as well. That's going to be my next big project. But I can't talk about any of them really. No. <laughs> it's the. Uh, Sad thing. Whenever we go to events, it's always what people ask, "What are you working on right now?" and and you've got to think about what you can actually say. Yeah, <laughs> can't tell them what you're working on right now, but maybe there's something in the past you worked on that. Yeah, <laughs> tell them about. I always yeah. find that like we have the schedule up for like the whole of next year, and it's like, oh, you look so cool. I can't <laughs> tell anyone about any of those. It's very exciting though. <laughs> I can't wait to tell people about it. Well, yeah, I mean, as hard as it is for us, for the people actually like you, you know even more than we do. Yeah. So uh, you've got to try and remember what we know and then what pe people, yes. the people know and then what you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, last week we announced, like, audiobooks, oh, no. finally, after 
you know a whole year of people going hey where are the audiobooks i want an audiobook and i'm like ah i know you do we do too i'm sure it will come along at some point and it's like it's here it's here everyone can have audiobooks soon get to that point. yeah that's gonna be very exciting and there it's gonna be the ffg titles and ubisoft titles to begin with marvel still needs some contracting um Mm. Yeah, someone asked me if Patriotists will have one. I was like, well, they've not been announced in, no Marvel ones have been announced in initial. Yeah, announced. for the moment, it will just be those. And then, yeah, Marvel is just going to be a bit more complicated. Um, yeah, as Marvel is <laughs> going to be. <laughs> Disney are very precious about such things. So, yeah, it's going to take a little bit more time with that one. So, come on, Ubisoft agreed. Yeah. <laughs> have, uh, have you yet described yourself as a Disney employee, David? <laughs> no. Uh, I've got Marvel on my on my Twitter profile now. Because nice. totally <laughs> it's <laughs> totally a Marvel writer by proxy. Second hand removed. Marvel once removed, so I should put back <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Marvel, right? It doesn't. <laughs> it says Marvel on the book. This is true. So, are we ready for the highlights yet? Yes. So, once you've sort of got um, the, the recess is done, I, this, this camera is not enjoying picking up the pink on this. <laughs> it's like, no, that's too pink. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's not. It's, anyway. like it's a lot brighter than my camera is showing it to be um so we're going to do highlights and i want you to think of like anime hair mm -hmm. for the highlights okay so you're you're going to be sort of on this crown circling around the top of the head with just thin little strokes over the top parts now i got me wondering if there's a dragon ball z miniatures game <laughs> Tie in, let's do it. Come on. <laughs> Can I get those rights? Vegeta novel, please. <laughs> okay, I'll do a TN novel. Nice. Dragon Ball, <laughs> if you're watching, contact us. Kira <laughs> Toriyama, if you're out there. <laughs> that is, that is I wonder if they do have like any tie in novels. I'm sure they have like manga and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they have any pros. Not the edition of the movie, perhaps. Mm. I mean, not not that that movie. I mean, <laughs> I was gonna say that's us blown our chances now. You just bad mouthed the movie. What IP that Aconite has would you want to write for, David, that you aren't yet writing for? This is not meant as a test of your knowledge of the IP rights. <laughs> yeah, no, probably uh, Twilight Imperium. Nice. Nice, yeah. Just to like the uh, you know, proper SF feel. Or maybe Terraforming Earth for the same reason. Terraforming Mars. Mars, yeah, sorry. That's already terraforming. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Robbie? Um probably some of the like the Tom Clancy stuff. Oh nice, yeah. Probably like Golden Sales and the and stuff. Yeah. Um that that really would be action centric. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> If people want action, then I guess it would be that. Yeah. Action for days. <laughs> Has Jim Swallow actually done some Clancy for you? I don't think he's done any Tom Clancy, but he has his own thriller series. Oh, yeah, that he, he does. 
I just saw he did your watchdogs and uh, yeah I don't know why I immediately think of him when I think of the Clancy I don't know if maybe he's done some other sort of Clancy-esque maybe tie in somewhere else perhaps but uh, yeah of course he's got his own Mark Dane yes that's the one He's got loads of those now, doesn't he? About six or so. I was going to say four, but <laughs> four. it's an even number, probably. <laughs> I think he's he's got one coming out very soon. Right. Or yeah. just come out. Or... I feel like I've definitely seen him advertising one. Yeah, very exciting. Oh, Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Thanks for watching. Hello. I'm currently reading Tales from the Crucible and I finished Doom of Fallaher. All I can say is, wow. Oh. That is very nice. Very nice to hear. Thank you, Eddie. Yay. Nate, you got to read The Shield of Jacan. Just, just saying. Dice Cup, they've got signed copies. Contact them. They'll send you some. I mean, you have to pay for them, but they will post them to you. <laughs> Pretty electric here. <laughs> Still can't quite see it. I need another webcam. I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother holding mine up. Once <laughs> again, I promise I will send photos. On Twitter. <laughs> yep. Likewise. I was thinking about not doing that because it looked terrible about 15 minutes ago, but it's come together a bit. So Yay. I thought it was more likely now. Yeah, you know what? I wasn't too pleased with the skin, but now it's dried a bit. And the hairs on top, it does look a bit better. Yeah. Yeah, you sometimes find that when you're wet planning, like the colours have to sort of sink into each other a little bit. Mm. You have to leave them to dry. I thought uh, that... Eddie also says, Fallahub mm -hmm. is an incredible fantasy novel, whether you like Descent or not. An absolute joy full of wonderful characters. It led me to liking your socials. Thank you, Eddie. That is very nice. <sighs> um... I always kind of worry, especially about my Twitter account, because you know if you run social media, you're supposed to have like a theme. If it's not just like a personal account, you like aim it towards something. But mine is just a mess of there's history stuff and then there's fantasy stuff and there's Warhammer stuff and there's miniatures and I feel like I'm not providing content for half of the people every time I post, but eh. I think by and large people don't want to have book stuff all the time. I Yeah. I haven't really got a plan or anything, but if I do think I've just been pushing books for too long, I sort of will stop. <laughs> yeah, it always feels a bit awkward or contrived if it's like post book stuff all the time, even though I want it. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, same for us. Like, you know, I try and make sure that we're not just buy our book, buy our book, but also giving people a bit of content about gaming and our authors and just sharing good news and being like hey talk to us about games as well we love games please come and talk to us this is kind of why we're doing this just now yeah exactly this is though loosely tied to the books not directly mm. tied to them actually something i've just noticed hold the model further away it looks much better <laughs> <laughs> and i mean that in a sort of uh you know it looks oh, great yeah. on the tabletop sort of thing yeah yeah i think yeah there's like a... you don't have to hold it like this no, and I, like what we're doing is we are painting to tabletop standard. So you can put it on a table. It looks good whilst you're on the table going, oh, that looks good. This isn't, you know, we're not trying to win awards with these. Um, if we did, I know I wouldn't be winning any, but it's just these look kind of cool. You get a little bit of like extra technique should you decide you don't want to just use a skin tone and a wash. There's a little extra that you can do. I think you can be surprisingly rough and it'll still look great. Yes. In fact, it might even look a bit greater once it's down because you get that extra colour and more contrast. And... Yeah. And it's, yeah, just about playing with colours and <laughs> finding something that works. Like, I don't do, I do some, like, my wet blending, but then sometimes I just like it to not be so, so perfectly blended. It just looks a little bit more real that way rather than perfect I did some non-metallic metal on her with the purple she's she's like, you're talking about yeah she's cool that's <laughs> in my hair but 
I think you've got a new top fan there, Robbie. Oh, oh. Wait, <laughs> yes. Uh, Eddie says, well, we would get along swimmingly. I love fancy play Warhammer and a history nerd who does yeah. American Civil War reenacting. Yeah. Robbie was just saying he's doing his first reenacting this weekend. I did. And uh, I was going to say, I like your um, red coat Lego or whatever. I know. <laughs> Uh, I do find there's often a big crossover between like, um, like sci-fi fantasy, especially Warhammer and like history. Mm. Yeah, there's this weird crossover between like Warhammer and military as well. Right? Yeah, I mean, kind of understandable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got uh, I once got sent um, like the the wing patches of this like Australian army guy who read some of my books and was just like, hey, this is cool, have some like patches. I was like, thanks, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this guy said how they were basically listening to Realm Slayer while they were driving around Basra. Wow. <laughs> I hope he's not getting distracted though. Yeah. <laughs> Too much noise, but I'm blessed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Really, like that. really nice. Yeah. I have everything for Descent Second Edition. I absolutely adore the new Descent as well. My game group loves it, as does my eight-year-old daughter. Yay. Yeah, I was saying I've just started playing the Descent game. Uh, I like that you can play on your own as well, as a lonely person who lives alone. <laughs> it's very sad when you get a game, you're like, I can't play it because I'm not two people. Um, yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> sad. I'm envious of your eight-year-old daughter. My daughter's nearly eight, I'm just sort of, she does drafts actually, she's pretty good at drafts. Oh. Yeah, I've only just upgraded her from snakes and ladders. <laughs> soon, soon. It's going to be a master strategist by the time she's 12. It's going to kick in your butt at Warhammers and Middle Earths and all those things. Right, so you should kind of have the hair sort of done. Yeah, I don't want to like overpaint, so I think I'm just going to leave her now. Yeah, so what yeah, I would do, like, when you come back to it, is just use a little bit of an off-white colour just to really pick out, like, the highlights, especially at the front of the hair on this bit. Like, that would definitely work if you just put a couple of dots of white just in there to bring yeah. focus to the face. So the brighter it is, the more focus you get to it. So putting it there will then people will be drawn to the face as well. I'm always a bit scared. When I get past the first highlight, I'm like, no, I'll ruin it. <laughs> too much. So we're going to move on to Chance. I'm not sure what colours she's meant to be, so I'm going to do her as a tabby cat. What colour are those? Orange. Orange. Ah, orange. orange. Uh, Eddie says, have you heard of the new rule set Sludge by the creator of Relic Blade? It's basically Napoleonic with fantasy elements. Cool. I have not, but that does sound pretty interesting. I, I have read I have relic played. I've not oh. played it yet. I bought a whole load of uh, miniatures at the beginning of lockdown and was definitely gonna paint them all. I've not painted any. So many cool games and models and things in the world in such a short time. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I've got a group of uh, Two other dads who I uh, sort of periodically game with, and we used to play. Uh, well, we've been playing Blackstone Fortress uh, nice. a bit, and we were going to play Necromunda, but then one of them just one of us decided we didn't want to do it. And uh, we've been sort of knocking some ideas around, and he's sort of basically bringing some. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's uh, about like World War One, I, I think, naval battles. He's going to like give us a test of that, and mm -hmm. we're going to play the. Uh, the alien box game Do you oh, yeah. another glorious day in the core he's got that so we're gonna play that and uh he's been trying to get us to buy the fallout uh miniatures game oh, yeah. Yeah. The yeah 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 the, no they're not the difference. that one is there and uh, and i was looking at this oh it does look good i do want it but <laughs> like what he says there's so many so many games yeah so I got the uh, Steamforge Horizon Zero Dawn uh, box. I went all in on their Kickstarter. Um, it 
is from the floor to there. Oh wow. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is all just Horizon <laughs> Zero Dawn. So if I and I want to do Fallout novels, <laughs> you know, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> be cool. I'd like us to do Horizon Zero Dawn ones as well. Also, like Dishonored, like I like the Bethesda games. And they they <laughs> good story. I like to think that you're there as well. Going, oh, I wish we could do this. Not just us. Not just us authors. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I, I'm often like, hey, I played this great game. Can we make books, please? I would like books, please. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I often yeah. get asked if I know about X, Y, or Z from Mark as the sort of the office gaming nerd it's like, yes i've got to make an amazing book <laughs> so doing the base coat of the dark orange first this is quite thin so i'm gonna to have to put like, quite a few coats on i think right, i'm gonna try oh, wow. i've only got one orange so i'm gonna try and mix my own oranges Ooh. with black and white see what <laughs> see what comes <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do orange, you can do, uh, yeah, black and white cat. I was also going to attempt to put like little tiger stripes on it as well. Oh, that's amazing. I wish I thought of that. I've already started doing my cat as a Scottish fold. Oh. Not I really. Don't know cat that is. It's grey, like the really like soft grey. Oh, nice. Oh, like that sort of bluey grey colour. Yeah, like blue and grey. They're very cute. That's oh, nice. Right, let's see what comes out of this. I think this is my favourite character. Um, yeah, I really like, I, I don't know what they're like, but I think they look cool. Your favourite to have written or uh, the miniature? Uh, to, writ, to have written, I mean. Um, I do like the models as well. I think my favourite model is probably Galadin. Um, I did yeah. like the lore that I read about the uh, cat folk. Yeah, the high rinks. And I did want to sort of squeeze one into Shields of Decan, except it <laughs> would have been totally unjustified. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what's happened to me. I keep meaning to include like a character and then just never getting around to it. Which means what I should really do is actually just write a whole novel about high rinks characters. Yes. That is the obvious. I demand more cat people stories. Yes. It's what the world needs. Are you wearing gloves there? What colour are you doing the fur of it? I've mixed my one orange with a bit of uh, light brown to make I it feel treacherous no. now. Yeah, feel mix it. I feel bad that I haven't done a orange cat, considering that I have an orange cat. <laughs> and I myself am supposedly ginger. Yeah, not. <laughs> Depends on the light, really. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't, in the heat of the moment, uh, the pressure on, come up with a independent colour scheme, so <laughs> I'm going to copy Angelis as closely as I can. I'm too inexperienced a painter in a game or anything to, uh, <laughs> to do that. Yeah, I mean, I only decided before we turned the cameras on that it was going to be an orange cat. <laughs> A bit Cheshire catty. I did like the idea of perhaps, you know, dry brushing on some stripes. And... Yeah, I think I like the idea uh, that they're yeah. I yeah, like stripey. Oop. 
I painted a lot of griff hounds and I like doing little patterns on them. They were fun. It's going to get bad now. I'm running out of uh, paint on my palette. <sighs> and I have to mix it again and it's not going to be the same. <laughs> Oh, Eddie, sorry, I missed some of these. I just went in on the, the new E-Man, come on, Kickstarter. Oh, unfortunately, it's not available in Europe for licensing reasons. Sad. I've uh, not watched it. not Europe, so. <laughs> yeah. I've not seen that one, actually. I think, come on, we're talking, because we've got our zombie side books coming out with them. Oh, yeah. They were talking about doing uh, Kickstarters to make the miniatures from the characters in the books nice. that would then be able to be played. It's like, that is cool. I would like that a lot. Just like one of their little Kickstarters. But... Yeah, a much bigger brush for this tail. Not too bushy. Yes, it's quite a, a great big bushy tail. Oh, this orange that I've used is like quite thin. Yeah, I've found it. Irritating me. <laughs> okay. I think because it's quite bright as well, it's not covering the grey that I've primed this cat with so you can see it through a little annoying does add some good shadow though so i really like this big claw that she's got yeah a claw heck yeah on the paw <laughs> Also, I hate to be that guy, but I think chances are key. Mm. Either that or I wrote the story wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, told me. Did you just say you're writing Zombicide novels? Yes, we are. Yes. So we have I, our I, first I, one, Zombicide I, Last I, Resort, is out. It's not, unfortunately. Sadly. Yeah, Josh Reynolds is doing yeah. one of them, isn't he? Oh, that's going to be sort of yeah. different, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. so Josh Reynolds is doing uh, Zombicide Last Resort, uh, which is out in October, in time for Halloween. Definitely. And um, next year, uh, we've just released the cover today for part of our Gen Con release, is uh, Planet Havoc, written by Tim Wagner. Um, and that is the Zombicide Invaders. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so we're doing... Uh, one in each of the main zombie side settings to begin with, and then uh, moving on from there. Uh, yeah, there go. Be good fun. I read some reviews that have come in today. Um, yeah, lots of fun zombie excitement. Jeff Reynolds, the same who wrote Soul Wars. I just finished that. Yes. Yep. Same guy. Same guy. He's written quite a lot of our books, so if you are a fan of Josh Reynolds, he wrote uh, Arkham Horror, Wrath of Nakai, he's written some Legend of the Five Legend Rings, of the uh, Poison River and Death's Kiss. Um, and he's written a special little short story for our birthday, which is going to be released next week on our new <laughs> bit of our website. It's all very exciting. Only Josh Reynolds could possibly be prolific enough to have that kind of time. I heard a, a tale once that he wrote a novel in 30 days. I, yeah, so um, so Watch Dogs, uh, we were given that really late. So him and Jim Swallow wrote that together in about just over a month. How do you know like the logistics of how that works? How like they co-author it? Josh told me that Jim kind of planned it and Rush Josh wrote it and Jim oh. edited it, kind of. Yeah, and then, yeah, there were, like, little bits where then, yeah, James would take a, a chapter and, and rewrite that chapter right. to fit more with the plan. Because uh, I was curious about that, too, how that could possibly work. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Is uh, Josh going to be on your Arkham panel? Uh, no, because he doesn't like to be in front of a camera. Why? He's a wise man. Yeah. So oh yeah, he he always just ignores those emails from me when I say, "Hey, let's talk about your book online." <laughs> it's like, what? I didn't even get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised actually he even shared the uh, thing about the poll to win a cake because I yeah. know he hates the awards and and public. Well, I'm glad because otherwise he might win it. <laughs> I love that cake. I mean, he did win the award, didn't he? With what? what he did, yes. So, yeah, Watch Dogs won yeah. uh, the Scribe Awards and also he won uh, UK Games Expo for Poison River. He is a talented man. Yes. It, it was a weird, not to diminish Josh's achievement in any way for Poison River, but it wasn't for like best book or anything, was it? It was for like best, best new gaming accessory <laughs> novelty. <laughs> yeah, best novelty, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> that's a new category put in because I, I put our book forward for best like accessory or something. They were like, it's not really an accessory though. It's like, well, what is it then? Make a. <laughs> Make a category, and so they did. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. power and influence that Ak and I have. Yeah, we need this book to win an award. You must create the category. <laughs> well, I mean that that wasn't. <laughs> I, I know. I, I, I to put this book in for an award, <laughs> not just give me an award. That would have been <laughs> much easier. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Eddie said, "Oh, David, I just googled your name." You wrote some of the AOS novels, period. Halakar is a legend. Well done. <laughs> Halakar is a legend. <laughs> would, you say, would you say he's your favorite character that you've like written ever or, or not? I, no, I'd probably say yes. It, it, was, it was good to do because it was the first one I invented for myself who the story is about. Yeah, the first main character who I invented for myself. Right. So obviously I was writing about book, you know, tabletop tabletop characters with codex entries until then. And so this is the first time I'd written a book starring someone I'd invented. So it was nice from that. Of course. I felt a lot of him in, in Patriot List though, writing mm -hmm. guys like Osborne and Bullseye especially, <laughs> that sort of devil may care. Larger yeah. than life. attitude was was definitely in there. <laughs> How are people doing for the base coat? I had to slap an extra layer on the tail. As you yeah. say, thin, so it's still not quite dry yet. But no, not neither. I've just finished the second layer, so I'm just going to leave that dry for a moment so here we are it's a bit browner than your yes Actually, i think that will, that will work well though it's not as brown as it looks on the okay it's a bit like you yeah. maybe a bit of extra <laughs> <laughs> it, it's more orange yeah. than it looks on the camera but uh, yeah that will, but that will work well because then you can just use the orange without the brown for the next bit which is sort of adding the texture yeah, that's the idea. And I'm going to use the same yellow that I mixed into the brown for my next layer. Sort of orangey yellow. The orange that I used was lava orange. Mm -hmm. It's a bit red. So what are we putting now? A uh, brighter colour. Yes, so we're going to go with a brighter colour. We're going to start... Um, as delicately as you can, start drawing uh, sort of lines, uh, just to sort of add like a depth and a bit of texture. And I would do them starting from like the tip of it, where the where it has like the little like lines on the tail. I'd go from the tip down that way rather than that way. Here, 
how long do you do your little lines just to like the base um i'm probably gonna do that the whole length of each little section i just want it to look like it's got a bit of movement to it So yeah, they don't have to be like perfect. What you're trying to do is just show that these are all like separate strands that all sort of move. Oh, that's my front door. Right, yeah. carry on. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. So David, you want to do a co-novel authorship the way uh, Josh and uh, Jim did? What together about descent? I guess it has to be descent, wouldn't it? It's the only thing we both do. Uh, pigeonholed ourselves already. This is Asia Sigma. Yeah, it's interesting the um, the idea of doing like one guy plans and edits and one guy writes. I can't decide which one I'd rather do. Probably writes, to be honest, because planning and editing is both stressful. <laughs> so I think with the Malice Dark Blade now, and yeah pretty sure that it was basically like Dan's idea that then likely basically wrote. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting. Which I think is interesting because yeah, obviously they're great. Yeah. I'd probably I'd probably want to do the uh planning and uh proofing actually because it's so much easier. <laughs> well, there we go then, we're solid. <laughs> Actually, writing is that is the hard part. Mark, if you're watching this, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so Eddie says, "Oh, he lives a stressful life as an attorney and an elected official, and novels you've written and that are coming do so very much to ease my mind." Oh, thank, thank you for providing this material. It's been a joy to read and an honour to chat with you all. That's very nice. It is nice to hear back from people who actually read it. Um, yes. Which sounds weird, I know, but when you write, you do so in such isolation. You don't know if anyone's actually going to enjoy your work. So. Yeah, I can imagine that's quite sort of nerve wracking as well. Kind of. I can't even yeah, tell. You have to sort of distance yourselves a bit from it after, like, you've signed that, like, that's done. Just, like, forget about that for now. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to hear back, um, even though it's normally quite a bit of time between you finishing writing it and they actually like people reading it. Uh, but yeah, nice feedback is good. Even bad feedback is okay sometimes if it's constructive. Yes. <laughs> Preface that. We're receiving WhatsApp messages at the same time, though. <laughs> Well, I just got some birthday presents delivered. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, nice. It's there a mouse hat <laughs> of a corgi bum. <laughs> uh, I guess Robbie and I probably are getting their notifications at the same time because it's the uh, Black Library WhatsApp. Shh. Facebook. <laughs> Black Library WhatsApp. <laughs> it's a Black Library WhatsApp. <laughs> Black Library right WhatsApp. Maybe we should start like that. Yeah, I mean we've got we do have our own like we have our own WhatsApp group, but yeah, you should make an author's one where you can There are too many and I chat don't rubbish about us. <laughs> there are too oh, many my authors. How, do do you know, do you have a number of how many you have, Anthony? Oh it's a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh maybe about just probably just under 30 i imagine just under 30. That's, doable. that's doable especially considering some people yeah. want to do want to be on it josh wouldn't want to be on it i bet <laughs> oh there he goes again <laughs> yeah you can have like well you could have like an aconite like marvel one and then a aconite ffg one and so you can go crush the streams as well you then you could chat about what you're what you're writing about <laughs> Okay, like, hey, I want to put your character in my book. 
which I always enjoy when that happens. Yeah, cross up was cool. Yeah, I like that issue. I really loved when uh, Guy wrote the uh, Skaven End Times novel and used all the characters from my Queek and Thorgrim books. I really love sort of seeing what another person does with them, sort of how they read it, how they interpreted what I did. Yeah. I can see why some people don't like it, but I love it. Because our school of X, um, Carrie uses some of the first team. Oh, uh, but Carrie just doesn't she? I think. Yeah, I need to I need to read that story because that'll be cool. Um, I could I could send that to you. That <laughs> would be. I mean, I guess I'll get I'll get my little copy, won't I? Because I'm yeah. in there as well. So. Yeah, I, I've got the ebooks uh, that because it's available to request if you are a reviewer and you're watching, and you want to review our books. It's up for. Uh, review. So when's the uh, Marvel Villains Anthology coming? <laughs> I don't know. That would be good. I would enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, that would be a great anthology. That's, yeah. that, that's then one I can do. <laughs> yeah, like the Untold yeah. Anthology. <laughs> of the, yeah. Oh, I'm, this is just me being subtly bitter that my pitch <laughs> for the, uh, the School of X Anthology was not accepted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I will never stop mentioning to him. Always a Marvel villain. I didn't get into the Arkham one, so it happens. Yes, it still happens. Even oh, we missed some more stuff from Eddie. Eddie, sorry. We are we, we are interested in what you're saying. Keep talking to us. Uh, I can't imagine the level of stress of the unknown and waiting to hear from strangers on it. I've done my part and reviewed on Amazon and Goodreads and posted on the dissent groups on Facebook. Yes. Oh. Excellent. In fact, you commented on my post, Robert, yesterday. Oh, yeah. I think, I, I think we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I did a screenshot of it because I saw it yesterday on my day off and sent it off to the Aconite crew. As I always do. Uh, where is everyone located? I live in for Louisiana, Texas. My grandmother is from Essex. I'm from Essex. Um, so we visit family there often and then travel around. Yes, yes, I, I'm from Essex. I'm from South End on Sea. Um, very not great, but was in Victorian times, pleasure piers and fun <laughs> place to go if you were a Londoner. Um, I now live in Nottingham, uh, which is in the East Midlands. Uh, and that's where Aconite is based. Where all fine publishers are based. Yeah, all all the best miniatures and such and the like are based. I don't think I don't find it stressful waiting for a book to come out. I think I'm always relatively confident it's decent these days. Anyway, it's probably more worried uh, when I was first starting out. But that's more a case of oh, why aren't people reading this book yet? And I can't wait to hear what everyone thinks about it. And I want to talk to people about this book, which I can't talk about yet because it's no one even knows about it. <laughs> yes, that's the most difficult bit. <laughs> it's like I'm writing this amazing book and nobody knows it, and it's the best. And, uh... Yes, there's a I keep te there's a free free chapter or two of Patriot List up on the Aconite site. And I keep saying people mm -hmm. to go and read it so they can tell me what they think because it's vanity. I think. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, I'm great. I think it's good, and I want other people to to see think that too. And is that out yet? <laughs> yeah. um, and for the record, I am from Inverness in Scotland. Um, although I did spend 10 years in Edinburgh at uni, which I enjoyed very much. So I kind of feel like Edinburgh is my second home now. But, but yeah, I'm from way up north, like proper north, not big English north. I am from Great Yarmouth in uh, Norfolk originally, but I've lived in all the principalities. It's a very fantasy sounding thing to say. <laughs> Scott has no idea what that means, but it sounds like it belongs in a, in a fantasy novel. I've lived yeah. in Wales for a bit, lived in Scotland for a bit. Ah, okay. Uh, I've, never been to Northern Ireland. Ireland. I've never been to Northern Ireland, I've missed that one. I've been to both, yeah, South and Northern Ireland. I've never been to Scotland. Yeah, I will. And when I'm there, I'm going to be like, hey, I'm here. 
Let's go for a drink. I, I can give you advice and stuff that way. Yay. Yeah, yeah. I think next, um, next year in Scotland for me. Have you been to Scotland, David? I lived in Dundee. Oh. Which uh, you could probably skip. <laughs> um, but but, but life looks lovely from the other side of, you know, when you're in Dundee, you can look across the. the <laughs> Think about where you wished you were. The Tay River, the Tay Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> lovely so you get lovely views and then there's loads of great things around dundee you know we went to pilocri and uh Kiramuir from there and uh various locks and glens and our growth is nearby and st andrews uh schoon and perth all nice great and uh edinburgh is nearby i've never been to glasgow actually nah. <clears throat> Yeah, Edinburgh's nice, and I want to go up there. I want to take my daughter up there to Edinburgh Castle. I think she'll like it. And, mm, I love Edinburgh Castle. Because she's been down to London, and my girlfriend says, oh, she'll go to London again. I've not been to Edinburgh yet. Go there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not the beer. Yes. I, yeah, I was from, uh, yeah, South End. Well, Westcliff on the sea, which is a little bit posher. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I love Edinburgh. I adore it. Wife and I are planning to of doing our ten year oh. anniversary trip next year through Scotland. Nice. Well, yeah, I'd recommend it. And have family in Great Yarmouth and Norwich. Have been many times. Near to where? Yeah. yeah. Near to Nottingham. Yarmouth and Norwich are near to each other. What I mean, I mean. Yeah, that's probably what he means. In Texas, in America terms, then everything's a bit near. Yeah, <laughs> I watch, Scotland is very near South End. In I would watch shows where they drive for like four days. Who would do that? Yeah. <laughs> I remember like complaining to one of my work friends, like, oh, I had to drive for like three hours. She's like, yeah, that's what we drive to get to our neighbors. Like, <laughs> stop whining. And I'm like, what? Someone's in California to Kentucky. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's taken three days. Yeah. I went on a coach <laughs> from Washington, D.C. to, to uh, um, New York. That took a long, that was like a long coach drive. That was like 13 hours. It was, yeah, yeah. When, but it, was, um, it was one dollar, so we were like five. <laughs> with that, with one dollar. Yeah, my it's friends like, and I. It's like driving to Rome or something, isn't it? It's yeah. Like, <laughs> my friends and I did a road trip of the East Coast a few years ago, which was amazing. But when we were planning it before we went, we were going to start in Boston and travel down to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, yeah. So we've got it all planned out to Florida. And then, so then from Florida, we'll go west to New Orleans, but that'll be like a day, like day and a half. No, it's a four day drive. <laughs> we so cut that off. We stopped in Florida. I missed that. To where and when? Where to? Um, where? Florida to New Orleans. Because on the map, it's like, it's here to here. But no, that, that in reality is like big. So yeah, <laughs> we do that bit. <laughs> I, uh, I just watched the, uh, the Mupp not the Muppets, the Chipmunks Road Trip movie, because I was oh. there. <laughs> what a wonderful segue. Because uh, it's just because they drive for a long way across the road. <laughs> because I was, I was here with my daughter had the COVID, and uh, so we were stuck here. So I, I watched a chipmunk movie every day for 10 days. Did your daughter watch it with you, or did just you have to? <laughs> <laughs> got to get away from everything. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, that. I can't remember the one now. Is it? Oh, it's from LA to Miami. I can't remember how long it took. I think it took <laughs> 16 hours straight for a reenactment. That's intense. Yeah, 16 hours wouldn't, like, you couldn't even drive that long in the UK in a straight line. I no. think Scotland to the south coast is like 13 hours. Yeah, I was going to say 13 hours from like Surrey to, to Scotland. And, I've, yeah, I've like the before, and then thought, I'm not driving that far. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit closer now in the Midlands. But... A six hour drive on Sunday to get back from our reenactment, which we think is just insane. So we'll take heart from all the American reenactors. Yeah, <laughs> to get five or six to get to my parents in there. 
in Norfolk from East York, here in East Yorkshire, really, which is why I don't do it almost ever. And <laughs> but it's because there's no motorways in East Anglia. Too marshy. <laughs> I don't wonder if Cambridge has one. I guess Cambridge is probably you know, got the M1 ish, I mean, or A1 even. So. Are you highlighting here now? Uh, yeah, so I'm still using the, the yellow. I've just added a tiny smidge of white to it. Just, I want to just pick up some of the um, very top bits on the tail and on the ears. That's bit of awful one grey out here that'll do yeah i'm using like an off-white for the I, I, yeah i like to use like an off-white or a very light grey rather than a white because it it's just too much otherwise i've just got the paints out that i'm using for my aeronautic and eyes. my little planes my little towel planes Oh, I guess we just re like misread Google Maps badly then. We probably had like <laughs> we probably just had a different New Orleans like in the map. So. <laughs> you, just, you just went the really scenic route. Apparently, yeah. That's a big difference. And it makes a lot more sense because yeah, on the map it doesn't look that far. Because it's not. Ten to twelve to fifteen hours to get to Disney World. Oh so you fly. I wish I wish Flying to Disney World was just like not a super expensive thing here. I really want to go for my 40th. It's like, oh, it's like three grand a flight <laughs> per person. Ouch. When my English cousins visited here for the first time, they are shocked by the distance of travel. It always makes me laugh. Yeah. I want to be there, say, so, oof, there's a two hour drive. And I'm like, is that it? Yeah, that's that's exactly what it's like. I remember like, guys, we, I stayed in like DC for four weeks with someone and they were like oh we're just gonna go we're just gonna go do the shopping around the corner and they'd all like get in the car <laughs> and i'd be like if it's around the corner can we not walk and it's like no this is a, a not a, an american around the corner <laughs> it's like <laughs> here is trader joe's was like an hour and a bit away it's like oh i oh. see <laughs> it's like, oh. and it's on like a massive road like a motorway each side you're like well like, yeah i couldn't cross that road either so <laughs> I see where you drive. Yeah, we were in Canada somewhere, my girlfriend and I, somewhere north of uh, Toronto that we'd found a bus to, and we sort of saw there's this sort of Tim Hortons on the map, and I'm like, oh, we'll take a walk there. I was like, no pavement, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no one walks. Yeah, I remember that thing, like we walked to a, an IHOP, and it looked really close, but it, it really wasn't. It was like, yeah, two hour walk away and like, yeah, no pavements. It was designed for driving to. And it's like, oh no, we've made a terrible error. By the time we got there, it's like, oh no, now we have to walk back after eating all the pancakes. <laughs> one of uh, my favorite places I've been, I think, Toronto. <sighs> yeah, I like Toronto. I've been to Toronto. I had the best chicken wings I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Nice. I saw a baseball game and that was exciting. Almost got hit by the ball. Oh, that would have hurt. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention and like some guy like pushed me out of the way as it came soaring by. I was like, ah, oh, thank you, <laughs> random stranger. I went to a baseball game in Boston. I found it deeply, deeply boring. Then there's the Boston yeah. teams. Maybe someone yeah, could tell I didn't me. know what was going on a lot of the time. <laughs> Someone tell me if only only Boston baseball is boring, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I think baseball is my least favourite of the American sports. It was really long. I remember it lasted a really long time. <laughs> yeah, it started raining halfway through when we were watching it. It was like, oh no, we've got to sit outside in this rain. That's not fun. I'm saying this this orange with the uh, with the light grey mixed in makes a really lovely highlight. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to sending this picture to you because because I'm quite proud. Yay! I'm proud of how it's come out. My Is in-laws it... in Texas have a 2,000-acre cattle ranch. I think the only other person in England who has that much land is the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how much 2,000 acres is. I no, I can't even no. imagine. It's like trying to imagine distances in space. It's just... My... Um... <laughs> 
apparently my house, like my parents' house, is one acre. So we own one acre. So that's <laughs> so it's two two thousand of your houses all next to each other. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, baseball is terrible, and I'm American. <laughs> American college football is where it's at, not the NFL. Yeah, I was just about to say the the stadiums and like the crowds that that draws is amazing. Like it's crazy in the US. Like yeah. just when if you said someone from another country, oh, college football, you'd be like, well, oh, that's like twenty guys playing in front of like ten fans from like your local college or uni. Yeah. But no, the US is genuinely like hundred thousand seater stadiums and stuff. I mean, like the national stadium in the UK is. Wembley, and that's what, like seventy thousands, I think. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Crazy. He also says, "If you want the best, we'll ever come to Louisiana, New Orleans. New Orleans is on my list of places to go, uh, mainly because I I like to watch a lot of American food programs. <laughs> it's just like, mm, I want to go there. It's just always just the food in New Orleans is always just amazing, and uh, I, I do love like food. I do love." Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm watching uh, Justified at the moment on uh, Channel 4. Mm -hmm. So they're always having fried chicken, and I love fried chicken. So I'm going to go to Kentucky and have some fried chicken. Yeah. With, nice. with, uh, with Timothy Oliphant and share some, share some wings. Yes. <laughs> I would, yes. I, I enjoy the yes, these, and thank you. I would like to go there. <laughs> So let's have a let's have a let's have an Eclite convention in New Orleans. Yeah, let's do it. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look next year. See if there's any like book conventions going Come on. in. New Orleans. <laughs> I feel like Mark brought something up about New Orleans, and I was like, I want to go there. Let's go there. <laughs> we'll make a case for it. It'll be fine. We'll go. So maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Next, year, next year, we're definitely going to try and get to. Uh, some of the American conventions. We want to do Gen Con. Um, we want to go see Gwen up in Montana and then do like New York Comic Con as well. So we might do like a zip zip flight and then go meet everyone in FFG in Roseville as well. It's the home of Captain Cisco. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do all the paperwork for you. Yes, that sounds good. You can do that for me. Get us to America. I was going to do stripes on this, but now I'm afraid if I do stripes, I'm going to ruin it because I actually <laughs> I quite like the fur texture that I've got going. Which yeah, I'm, I'm really actually happy. Yeah, with I'm happy. Well. Yeah. yeah, and if I got to see, I'm going to show you anyway since we're here. Yeah, I can see like the highlights on the towel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just leave it as this bright orange tabby cat. Because mm. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. Are you going to do some stripes? Well, this is this is the thing. I was going to do black stripes on it, but now I'm like, I might ruin it by doing that. So I might leave it. Because <laughs> the black, if I ruin it, I have to restart the whole thing again. Yeah. No one wants to see me cry on stream. <laughs> <laughs> I had that my Underworlds war band. I was like, it was just the, the eyes left. I was like, no, it's all great. And I don't want to ruin it by messing up the face. <laughs> I'll leave it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I got a whole load of Underworld stuff yesterday for my birthday. So apparently that's what I'm going to be playing. Okay. Didn't have much of a choice in it. But <laughs> right, Angelie, I think I'm going to have to go now. My my oh, yes, it's, it's quarter to six. Time. That is that is time. I think it might be oh, time. Eddie, have fun yeah. going back to work. <laughs> Let us all say goodbye then. But we did it. We did the skin, the hair, and the fur. Yay! And, and these are really good. If I didn't say so myself, and I'm going to send you a picture when I get back. Perfect. <laughs> well, as always, thank you very much for coming along. Um, I think before like Christmas, I'm going to trim for the some of the villains. Um, I'm going to need, I need a break <laughs> over October to get over <laughs> birthdays. But yeah, maybe yeah, in November do some villains. That'll be quite That'd fun. Be cool. Yeah, maybe not, maybe not the big one though. Yeah, the, ooh, maybe, maybe. Not the big assembly one. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll go with some of the smaller ones. Get a online, we could stream that. Yes, just gluing it together. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for hanging out with us. Eddie, it's been lovely to talk to you as well in chat. And uh, yes, I shall see you all later. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.